Good morning. Today is actually the Friday after April 21st, but Wednesday this week we celebrated or commemorated Anselm of Canterbury on our church calendar. He is an 11th century Archbishop of Canterbury, the second in that position, who served and quarreled with two English kings. Not a bad record. His motto of, quote, faith seeking understanding does not mean that he hoped to replace faith with understanding. Anselm is the most significant theologian in the Western Church from Augustine to Thomas Aquinas, a span of 800 years. We would do well to consider his ideas. Faith for Anselm was not an intellectual belief, but it was more a volitional drive to love God, to seek to know what God desires for us, and to act in that manner. Faith is a willful action. Anselm stated that when faith was reduced to an intellectual act of simply believing a thing that we ought to believe, then that kind of faith, according to Anselm, is dead. Faith-seeking understanding for Anselm means an active love of God, seeking a deeper knowledge of God. His four main works have been debated by scholars and theologians ever since they were published. Preceding Aquinas by two centuries, Anselm used a form of rational inquiry and discourse used much earlier by Greek philosophers and some scholars as Europe climbed out of the medieval period from the Dark Ages to the medieval period and into the Renaissance of early modernity. Unlike the Buddhist, this form of rational questioning of Christian faith was seen as a potential threat at its time for two reasons. First, some in the church feared that deep rational inquiry might threaten an appropriate understanding of revelation or that which was revealed by God in Christ. The second concern I will quote directly from an academic author from a humanities college class. Quote, Second, the sense of autonomy, pride, and pretentiousness that are naturally engendered in rational inquiry were seen to be in potential, if not actual, conflict with the requisite attitude of humble and simple faith. The gospel was required as more accessible to simple, uneducated folk than to any educated intellectual elite. For many in Christendom, because the context of revelation to their thinking I'm sorry, content of revelation to their thinking is already clearly and unambiguously explicit. The only appropriate response is obedience and not at all to question why or what does it mean or is it really so, end quote. It is this ideal that the gospel was regarded as more accessible to simple uneducated folk expressed by church critics of Anselm in the 11th century 11th and later centuries, leads to a, what I would call a dumbing down of Christianity today and a tendency to accept uncritically anything someone who calls themselves a preacher says. In other words, don't ask questions, just drink the Kool-Aid. For centuries, the church taught the ransom theory of atonement, whereby Jesus' death paid a ransom to Satan, allowing God to rescue those under Satan's bondage. Anselm freely questioned this long-held doctrine, asking, why should the Son of God have to become a human to pay a ransom? Good question. And why should God owe anything to Satan in the first place? Anselm went on to say that humanity owes God a debt of honor for our sins. And from that point, he developed a new satisfaction theory of atonement. Later development of atonement doctrine brought us the, quote, penal substitutionary theory of atonement. Kind of a mouthful, isn't it? Whereby Jesus suffers the punishment for the sins of humankind. In this thought, God not only forgives our sins, but enacts justice through the death of Jesus. While this idea of the crucifixion as divine justice to erase our sins forms the staple of Baptist and evangelical preaching, I've never been comfortable with it, and I am still seeking greater understanding. But I am thankful for an Italian 
who was sent to Kent County, England, Canterbury, to serve as a bishop not long before the Battle of Hastings and the upheaval of England's history, and who had the perspicacity to use the best of his intellectual abilities to bolster his faith and the faith of millions following him. And I am thankful for someone who attempted to raise a high bar for Christian faiths, saying that God can stand up to rational human inquiry. I'm thankful for someone who says, we don't have to dumb down our faith for the uneducated masses, even if I don't completely agree with them. Have a great day.